This is the IoT for All Media Network. Hello, friends in IoT. Welcome to Let's Connect, the newest podcast in the IoT for All Media Network. I am Ken Briota, Editorial Director for IoT for All, and your host. If you enjoy this episode, please remember to like, subscribe, rate, review, and comment on all your favorite podcasting platforms. And to keep up with all the IoT insights you need, visit IoTforAll.com. Before we get into our episode, the IoT market will surpass $1 trillion in the next few years. Is your business ready to capitalize on this new and growing trend? Use Leverage's powerful IoT solutions development platform to efficiently create turnkey IoT products that you can white label and resell under your own brand. Help your customers increase operational efficiency, improve customer experience, or even unlock new revenue streams with IoT. To learn more, go to iotchangeseverything.com. That's iotchangeseverything.com. Now, let's connect. My guest today is Muda Sutakar, CEO of iSera, and we're going to talk today about AI and sort of how it works in the real world, what it can actually do, and what uh, how you should be using it. Mudu, thank you so much for being my guest. Welcome to the show. Ken, thanks for having me. Thank and you. I hope you are safe and your family is safe and your listeners are continuing to be stay safe. Uh, this difficult COVID time. Yeah, it's been a heck of a year, hasn't it? I hope the same for you and yours. Um, and of course, uh, I hope all you folks out there listening have been weathering the COVID times uh, safely and well. Mudu, in case folks aren't familiar with you or with Isera and how you guys work uh, within IoT, can you give us a little bit of your background and where home base is for you? Yeah, um, so uh, I'm the co-founder CEO of Isera, and Isera is based in Palo Alto. I live in Cupertino, um, and Isera is uh, as a company which is now more than three years old. It's venture backed. Uh, which funded by com- uh, venture firms in Silicon Valley like uh, Norwest Ventures, uh, True Ventures, Menlo Ventures, uh, etc. Um, and uh, I-, I think in, the, in general, in the broader AI, we play in the broader AI space. Um, the name ISRA is mainly designed uh, around how we automate customer service, service management. Um, again, remember when we started it, there was no COVID. My goal is can AI automate manual, repetitive, common tasks. Uh, across the spectrum. And obviously, IoT starts bringing up in new challenges, uh, right, with 5G. And the 5G is itself, 5G cloud and AI is going to hopefully make AI, IoT to the next generation. I think that that is a great place to start because there's a lot of sort of future think around AI. And I don't think it's all super connected to what AI is today. Um I was talk I was interviewing a couple of years ago uh, Jim Goodnight of SAS and uh, I asked him during that interview you know what is AI what is what does he think of as AI and he said oh AI doesn't exist it is not the way people think about it you know AI is just uh the way it really exists is um data analysis sophisticated algorithmic data analysis but all it is is looking at the things we know in the way that a computer can and a human isn't super good at do you agree with that sort of assessment and and how do you think about what ai really is <laughs> i mean look i don't have any uh, religious thing on ai so i'll tell you my practical view look ai is for sure um, it's AI is not any magic it's math at the end of the day it's it's about data math and algorithms. Mm-hmm. Um, um, machine learning and AI has evolved to a point where uh, it can learn a few things. There are areas it will continue to evolve. Um, areas where it gotten better is, as we have seen it uh, in the areas image processing, it became really real, right? Uh, we have seen AI can do quite a bit of recognizing images. People use it for video. It's very real in the data world, uh, in ad technology. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, we have seen the danger of what Facebook did uh, using AI, right? Yeah. Uh, so alternating people's behavior in the news, etc. So Facebook, Google, and Amazon, they're exploiting AI for ad technology. Uh, I think a lot of AI and machine learning happen in financial services, uh, which people talk less. Right? And we see this flash trading, right? Um, uh, it's called the fintech space. Uh, this whole uh, algorithmic trading um, mm-hmm. is all nothing but AI, right? So algorithms or machines are trading with each other. Uh, sometimes our wealth is impacted by that, right? Uh, our 401k accounts and our yeah. savings accounts and our uh, mutual fund. So I think some areas like that have been around already for more than five, ten years. 
and people are already seeing the good and bad of that it's going on uh, the next level where i see the um, ai is going to start happening in more realities um, in sales marketing customer service right i think customer service is where i started seeing more of this in 2016 and 17 mm-hmm. when i was at service now right um, what started happening is particularly call centers right uh, highly repetitive task right uh, before at least you wanted to talk to human being now you are the your father your mother your high school teacher at home you don't have time to talk to somebody so if there's a way you can interact with the system yeah and get the job done right highly repetitive to task let's say you want to set up your appointments or you want to have somebody to respond to certain things somebody asked a question about iot podcast how do i join ken podcast what are my recent articles they should be able to chat to a system yeah. other side should not be a live agent a live human being yeah right? yeah for uh, sure and and i think that 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 sort of execution of ai is sort of a a non endemic one. It's not one that people think of first, but I think it's one of the best uses for sort of the the type of AI that we have now where it sort of runs a choice tree kind of thing. And uh I think it's got a lot of em- applications as you said, not just in customer service, but also for retail and and right. and online shopping. And it of course gets used there a bunch, but also sort of on the industrial side. I think that there's um a lot to be said for sort of choice tree ai in manufacturing for instance if you're if you're trying to optimize a manu- manufacturing line or a, a a warehousing operation or a supply chain in general if you can alter the the sort of decision tree um according to to changing sta- uh, you know situations it seems like that's a a natural case for ai right it is so i think you use a lot of good words like decision trees and um, uh, make conditions so i think uh, there again the schools of ai that evolved in the last three years can uh, the early days people created these decision trees and some people call them guided flows mm-hmm. like you saw google acquired a company called api.ai you have uh, ibm doing ibm watson uh, salesforce einstein all these are i actually call them some people call them chatbots some people call them actually uh, supervised guided flows or decision trees that is if somebody asks this question go down this decision tree path right hey is your troubleshooting is here is it on hardware is it in the device at the edge is the device not responding so you could create some kind of a decision tree and give that to a system and say to go do that uh, but what happens with that approach is that works for cases where you already thought through the decision tree if you have already thought through it you're almost acting like a god right you're, yeah. you're like you know exactly what your user is going to ask and go through it mm-hmm. there is a reason where the, sometimes the people are going to ask you is not something you can think through and that's like think of like how google created the search for the long exponential tail of what users may ask you may not know so same thing if you want to do that for uh, for ai i call that unsupervised ai which is you can't supervise and think through all the decision trees Yeah, and yeah. that that's something that I'm fascinated by. Uh, and I know I promised we wouldn't get too much into future think here, <laughs> but the the real impact for sort of all of this data collection that we do in IoT and all of the cloud storage and 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 also AI algorithmic science that's happening is to me looking for the sort of unknown unknowns the the implications of statistical analysis that we aren't thinking of and that we don't know of because they are perhaps minute in you know or they're correlative not causative and so we're not seeing how powerful they could be that kind of stuff i think that there's a lot of advantage to be found in that kind of sort of unsupervised analysis because i don't know maybe i'm not arrogant enough but i don't think it's possible for humans to think of all the possibilities <laughs> no you are not you are absolutely you, you kind of described the perfect way right see if you think of every possibility then as i said you're really like acting like a god so but if you let the system think through those example and system also will make a mistake ai is not perfect too uh, and that's where you use the word data i think able to use the data to create this decision trees dynamically in the in its brain So that's where the neural networks comes in. Mm-hmm. That's where the people call it deep learning, part of the AI. So if I can use your, let's say if I can take all your podcasts, can 
and convert the text transcript and actually have AI learn, I can do unsupervised AI on it. So, and able to create a decision tree on its own called a knowledge graphs, right? So, yeah. so that's where the new unsupervised AI is coming is this idea of knowledge graph, dynamic decision trees. In So, you're really not creating a decision tree, but you're creating the chain of thought in the algorithmic brain. So what I'm hearing is, folks out there listening, this is a big announcement for us. The next show to come up on the IoT for All Media Network will be entirely hosted by AI. We're just going to go through and uh, Mudu is going to write it for us. And we're just going to have the AI podcast. And uh, our guests are going to come on and talk to our uh, our algorithmic host. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> but I mean, seriously, like, uh, can I think of this whole idea? So what we are doing at Isarath today, and when we started, I was not... Uh, aware of how much we could accomplish we did so we actually crawl uh, any content like content could be unstructured content from your web pages mm-hmm. it could be your uh, uh, the live agent call notes it could be your uh, uh, pdf documents right yeah uh, any documents and out of that if i can derive what i call the meaning uh, intents uh, because language has something called an intent because in, in english language you you may ask the question in 10 different ways what is the intent and how many different the intent can be applied? It could be a synonym. It could you might use a different phrase. Um, it's called utterances in AI. See, all these things are very important because in a way, bringing back to your IoT, the best example of IoT in the industry are two of them. One of them in automotive industry is Tesla. Mm. Tesla cars are the big IoT devices on our freeways, yeah. highways, right on our roads. And the, at home, you have another IoT device called Alexa from Amazon. Yeah, these two devices are now. If you can make every IoT device has a standard stack, an operating system, and has a natural language interface, right? You can actually talk to your Alexa. You can talk to your Tesla. Tesla will tell you when to service your car. Mm-hmm. So they have taken the AI to a point. They monitor it. They collect the data. They're able to do predictive maintenance in case of Tesla. In case right. of Alexa, you can talk to it. You can interact with it. You can do things. It can do only limited things. It can say, play the music. It can say, start my podcast. Yeah. Uh, right? Uh, um, but but it's can, also it getting be better. better at at being predictive. I I'm not on the Alexa uh, platform in my house. I, I'm on uh, the competitor, the Google Home. But sure. um, but it's a, a very similar operative uh, system, and and uh, it, it's getting really good. Like it will send me alerts and say, "Hey, your furnace seems to be turning on and off pretty frequently. Make sure you check that there isn't a problem." And that's a predictive maintenance thing. Um, it's not. Uh, sort of determinative. It's not saying here's the problem. It's just saying it's still in the early phases. But it's interesting how it's learning that kind of pattern. Absolutely. I actually, I mean, you nail it. So it's communicating with you. So you're comfortable talking to it and it is interacting with all your devices, right? Mm-hmm. So the devices, so the thing that's also missing in the IoT, use the word data, is the IoT devices are not chatty. See, mm-hmm. one problem with if you look at why the IT industry did well, uh, the application the SaaS cloud is, if you look at from Microsoft, they generate a lot of logs. You probably heard the word logs and events and telemetry. Of course, yeah. The IT industry is well known for generating logs. Companies like Splunk build entire the company on logs and events, etc. Whereas if you look at the IoT devices, they tend to be less chatty. This and they generate less data. Mm-hmm. So even though they're not, so we it's, uh, they don't have they're opposite of the big data problem because it's like you are a human. Uh, if you are a device. And I'm just going to use you as, if you're an IoT device and if you don't talk much, I don't know who you are. I can't predict who you are, your behavior. Right. But if you talk, then I can start getting a sense as to who you are and et cetera, right? So same thing with IoT devices. They need to start generating a good enough telemetry data of various points. Because if you just give me one data point, I can't predict about you. Right. And and the the limitation on the IoT side, of course, is bandwidth is expensive, battery life, yep. you know, all these other things. And I think that that's sort of where the the edge of the network is becoming more and more important is being able to um to store data and transmit it in the most efficient possible ways or to transmit only the relevant data, that kind of stuff is allowing us to build um some really interesting sort of digital twin style models that then we can run the algorithmic AI against and try to create some of these decision tree things. Are you seeing that sort of thing happening uh, 
in sort of in your work where on the uh, maybe only on the industrial side where they're using the edge data in com- combination with sort of the big data in the cloud to sort of build these models? We do. We, uh, I think that's an area that more work to happen. Uh, I am seeing some, but not much. I think uh, on the data, I'll tell you the challenges are, as you just rightfully said. See, IoT devices don't have enough battery or capacity, we call it storage. So they need to come with an intelligent mechanism to generate enough telemetry to the cloud so that you don't. Edge is where the actual action is happening. Mm-hmm. But the processing analysis can happen in the cloud, like or how Google Home does it or, or Alexa does it, right? But able to collect enough data to send it out to some place and creating an IoT device with the right stack to write collect, there's still work to be done. But once the data comes there, analysis is happening in the cloud, the decision making can happen at the edge. So you push out your algorithm, so so the edge will decide. So you want to decentralize the decision making. Mm-hmm. It's not you don't need to always talk to your mothership to decide. Right, right. So the algorithm should be compact enough to push the executable into the edge. And that's that. I think I don't think we're there yet, uh, but I think that that's when we're going to start seeing like real functional AI. It, it's going to stop being sort of a an experimental nice to have for the enterprise and more of a must have uh, sort of tool rather than a, a, a toy. Awesome. Yeah, no, it is. It is. So I think uh, when the day happens like that, that will be a big revolution for us, right? So I think I'm expecting, look, things don't happen always linearly. Sometimes it happens exponentially, but industry is definitely going the right direction. Mm-hmm. The promise of 5G telcos can do a lot more. Yeah, uh, I, if you have to pick one area, I think telcos have the network. Uh, um, by definition, telcos move slow. Uh, I think if I was one thing, the telco companies should invest a lot more on 5G devices, 5G network, uh, drive this, uh, whether they use different uh, frequency than LTE, how they want to communicate with these devices. Mm-hmm. Right, various, uh, I mean, there, the technology exists, the 5G standards exist. Now the real use case of how it will help and an ordinary human being is not there yet. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, the best example, like you, you use Google Home at home, Google Home, Alexa, Tesla. They tend to be the still the IoT devices that people are using it. You need a very good use case of another IoT with 5G that all of us can use. Yeah. And I think we also need to figure out uh, sort of personal data anonymization in a way that can be trusted because there's a lot of value in data that absolutely should be kept private and right now the only answer to that is don't share that data and so we're not learning anything from it i think we need to get much better at anonymization in order to make the consumer space especially uh really rich enough to to make ai powerful um but we need to make sure that people know that they're going to be protected and and not compromised uh, through sharing their data, I think. It is. Uh, and I have a comment on that if you're interested, I can expand. So yeah. one thing, uh, can there is, uh, I, I don't know, if it is definitely doable in the IT industry and that's what we are doing it. I call it the privacy, to, as you said, the, 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 the data belongs to you at home. Mm-hmm. So ideally what you want the Alexa and Google Home to do is, can will define your privacy policy. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, um, and that sort of brings us around as we get near the end of our time, uh, that brings us around to what I think is maybe the most important part of this discussion, which is for the listeners who are often trying to think of ways to get ahead of AI or leverage AI in their business, what should they be thinking about? Should they still be in data collection mode? Should they be trying to partner with someone should they be deriving their own algorithms uh, you know is it simpler to just get involved with a platform company like what uh, what would you recommend for folks who want to leverage ai in their business but don't really know how to get started very good question i think the first is uh, I, i've been this debating this through my uh, as i talk to various cios and customers right first is you really need an executive who believes this See, what's happening in the industry is everybody wants to know AI and they want to put their uh, fingers wet kind of thing, but uh, they're really not doing it justice to uh, being persistent. And you got to stay at a project. See, there some projects like this, you want an executive who will make 
saying that this is a, my next five, 10 year projects. Most people, what they do is I'm going to give a limited budget. I'll do a pilot. I'll do a POC. I'll talk to this. So, and then they claim they are doing AI. So the issue is, first of all, you have executives who don't believe in AI should not be driving. Yeah. You really need somebody who says, look, look uh, you believe in the IoT. You believe in the podcast. Or you bet your career on it. So you need people like you who are willing to say, look, I believe in this and give them the charter on AIs. That is the biggest problem right now in the industry of AI is people are people who are actually running the projects they should not be running it they don't believe in it mm-hmm. uh, they are not capable of it uh, and not do they have the capacity or the brain trust in that so that's the number one number two is is data as you said collect the data never throw it data is your new oil uh, all data is leverageable uh, in training the model mm-hmm. so that's number two number three is unless you, if you are in a business to build your own solution then go build it then create your own data science team AI machine learning. If you are not, get whatever the solution you want in that industry and work with that uh, vendor. Uh, so whether sometimes you have to decide is it a do-it-yourself or buy. Yeah. Uh, but that's the decision I leave it to them. But the key is the decision maker right now on the phone. You know, I've, I've been saying for years that uh, uh, the next sort of company that doesn't exist yet that'll be a trillion dollar company in the next 10 years is whoever figures out how to make a data stock exchange. So that any company that needs a data set can sort of lease it or buy stock in it. And uh, the data sets are all independently owned or owned in shares by whoever created the data. I I, I swear there's got to be a way to do this. And whoever figures it out is going to be the next trillionaire. <laughs> I agree with you. And I, by the way, for our own company, if somebody gives us various data sets, we'll buy them. Assuming the data is clean, good data. Sure. Uh, there's enough money. To, yeah, you're right. The data marketplace will happen. Yeah, will I think so. And, 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 and I, I think the, the secret to it. That, if it is your data, and if they take your data, you should get a cut, like uh, the yeah. App Store model of app. So if you are willing to share your data, you should make money off that. So that the trickle-down economy should be is Google and Amazon should pay you 30% of the data that they share on you. Yeah, I agree. I think that that's going to be the secret to these real, like people talk about big data sets, but I don't think they were there yet at all. To get there, I think the secret is people are going to have to get some sort of investment in or value in sharing that data and not just individuals, companies. You need, you know, you need a, a, a company like Salesforce to trust that they can anonymize their data and put it into the public marketplace and that they're going to get revenue out of it. If you can get, if you can find that man, uh, I think you're, I think you're pretty much done. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, Mudu, unfortunately that's about all the time we have uh, for today. Thank you so much for chatting with me today on let's connect. It's been a real pleasure uh, learning about you and about what you've been doing at ISERA. Thank you, Ken. Thanks for having me and continue to stay safe. Thanks again to all of you listening out there. I hope you've enjoyed our discussion, and if you have, please make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our episodes. We post every week, and I hope you'll leave us a rating, review, and comment on your favorite podcasting platform. If you'd like to suggest a guest, please click on the link in the description. And we also have a great sister podcast on our network called the IoT for All Podcast, so make sure you check that out. Hey, Ken, let me jump in real quick and introduce your audience to another awesome show on the IoT for All Media Network, the show that started it all, the IoT for All Podcast. Podcast, where I bring on experts from around the world to showcase successful digital transformation across industries. We talk about use cases and IoT solutions available in the market and provide an opportunity for those companies to share advice to help the world better understand and adopt IoT. So if you're out there listening and haven't checked it out, be sure to go check out the IoT for All podcast available everywhere. Thank you, Ryan. Now get back to your show. And thank you all for joining us on this episode of Let's Connect. I've been Ken Briota, Editorial Director of IoT for All and your host. Our music is Sneaking on September by Otis McDonald. And this has been a production of the IoT for All Media Network. Take care of yourself. You are listening to the IoT for All Media Network.